Okay. Now it's okay? Yeah, I can see the slides and okay. other people. At this moment, the slides are in, uh, if I put them in the modality of presentation, can you see also me? So this is better? Yeah, so okay. you, there will be icon of you on the top of the screen, yeah. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah. So. Um, uh, yeah, we can wait, wait uh, just for one or two minutes. Yeah. People are still joining quite, quite a lot of people. Right, so yeah, uh, just continue that topic. Uh, um, I mean, after this meeting and you will meet faculty and uh, Mohammed Yaku will also be there. We can definitely talk a little bit more about that. And later on, we can organize a separate kind of meeting okay. to talk about this uh, AI health outcome. Yeah. Professor Song, I already sent my apologies. I won't be in the second meeting. Oh, Sorry. okay, yeah. But, but then, then we, we can arrange another meeting. We, have an, we can have another meeting, definitely. So I have another meeting already organized. Uh, uh, it's, uh, Mohammed, uh, can, mm -hmm. can you send me an email with your address so I can... I, I, will, I will send it now. Okay. That's okay. right. That's right. Yeah. We, we have strong interest in the direction of AI in the house. And yeah, we want to do more in that space. Great. It's yeah. great that uh, you, you give us this opportunity. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because it's um, it started with Israel uh, and uh, after the uh, uh, the agreement uh, with the uh, Emirates uh, and Israel too, uh, they decided uh, to uh, to create uh, this uh, triangular uh, uh, yeah. activity that uh, actually the title is AI and cybersecurity for health. Okay, so, I'm not interested in cybersecurity at all. So this is mm -hmm. uh, this part. So the Italian government asked me to organize uh, um, something in Italy before this year because Italy is uh, the as the president of the G20 in uh, this year. Yeah. And uh, the next uh, year, if uh, the COVID will, per will, will allow us uh, to have uh, Expo in Dubai or in Dubai and Abu yeah. Dhabi, uh, we would like to to have uh, one week in February uh, considering the topic of AI and the cyber and health in general. That's great. Uh, actually, uh, MBZUI, uh, our university, just signed an agreement with the uh, Weizmann Institute of Science in Israel for a strategic collaboration. And then uh, we will actually have uh, also some concrete kind of a project on healthcare as well. Uh, and actually, this triangle of collaboration would be great. You know, it's just strengthening that, that, that tie of collaboration. Very good. Uh, uh, then uh, you should uh, to, uh, tell me who is uh, the person or who are the person in Weizmann, because mm -hmm. in this manner, I, uh, I, I have the contact in Israel through my uh, Italian embassy, but mm -hmm. also yeah. with uh, some friends like, uh, I don't know, Michal Irani that is in Weizmann. Uh, she, she's a good friend of mine, uh, but uh, there are many other of... Uh, I think I will ask uh, who is the person in charge, but the, that agreement is like a quite like a university level kind of agreement that both the president of uh, Weizmann Institute of Science and our president signed the agreement together. So but, we'll see who is the actual person like uh, in action or in charge. Okay, okay. that's the way we will... Uh, Okay, that's great. Uh, maybe we can start and I will introduce you first. Um, yeah, um, yeah, uh, it's my honor to invite Professor Rita uh, Kushiara from um, University of Modena and Reggio Emilia, Italy, to give us this talk. Um, Rita uh, has the AI Magic Lab Research Lab for Computer Vision Machine Learning multimedia and related applications. She is also the director of IRIS unit at Modena, one of the 30 European units of the European Labs of Learning and Intelligence Systems. She is also responsible for the NVIDIA AI Technology Center in Modena. Since 2018, she is the director of the National Lab of AI and Intelligence Systems and this of the Senate, the Inter-University Italian Consortium of Informatics, with the support of the Italian Presidency of the Councils of Ministers. She is also a member of the Board of Directors of the Italian Institute of Technology. Today, she is going to uh, talk about human behavior understanding by videos. Um, now the floor is yours, Rita. Yeah, let's okay. welcome. Okay, thank you very much. So, <laughs> thank you. Uh, thanks for the presentation. So that is uh, uh, the, the discussion of today 
uh, okay, the initial talk uh, title was human behavior understanding. Uh, since I don't want to spend too much time, I would prefer to, to give an uh, idea of uh, the type of research we are doing. Probably I will discuss more about the human understanding without the term behavior, just only to talk you. Uh, considering the idea to detect and understand uh, the people uh, motion in, uh, uh, in the world. For this reason, we use uh, this picture that is a, a famous uh, uh, statue of Umberto Boccioni uh, in Italy. It's uh, very famous in Europe because it is uh, in the 20 cent coin. So probably many people see that. That is about uh, the, the motion field of the people that are working. So we, we use that also in computer vision. Just uh, one uh, uh, slide about uh, where I am because, uh, um, because we are far but not too far. Uh, Modena is uh, a medium city in, in Italy but very important for the industrial companies we have and also for his history and is uh, between Milano and Venice, uh, okay, in a triangle between Milano, Venice and Florence. Uh, we are more or less uh, 80 kilometers for all of them. And uh, um, as uh, uh, Liz told before, we, we have a, a very good university. Uh, it's the second old in Italy and the, probably one of the oldest in, uh, in the world because it's been done in uh, 1175 and uh, with the different uh, department uh, and uh, um, with a good group of, of uh, uh, computer vision, pattern recognition and machine learning. I am uh, at Unimore. So this is uh, the agenda of today. Uh, Lee, could you tell me uh, more or less how, many how much time I have? Uh, so you have roughly like uh, 50, 50. Okay. So that, uh, at the end, so this is my introduction. I will discuss about data that is important uh, about uh, some uh, recent paper we presented uh, in uh, CCV, CVU and CVPR. And probably I will give uh, just an overview of some other similar project uh, in order to do the conclusion. Uh, so, uh, in general, when I do research, I, I start with some question. And the, the question that probably I do, and also you do, because your university is an AI university, is why we are studying AI. So probably all of you knows uh, uh, these uh, images uh, where there is a human and robot hand uh, that put together with the idea to connect uh, uh, humans uh, and uh, artificial systems. Actually, uh, this comes for a very old uh, picture uh, uh, in Italy and very well known, that is this, uh, because the idea is to make an uh, intelligent machine, but uh, I believe that we have not to do intelligent as humans, uh, but possibly we would like to do something that is better than humans. And for this reason, also in computer vision, now we try not only to emulate uh, human vision, but we would like to do something better. But what is important is that surely we would like to work for humans. So uh, for, for improve, uh, uh, to, to make better our life, uh, our well-being and our application. And therefore, this is the original image that is Michelangelo in Cappella Sistine in Rome. So that is uh, the connection between uh, the God and the human. And this is very famous for this reason in over the world, uh, uh, artificial intelligence uh, uh, put, try to put together the two hands. So this is the definition of AI that we use in our courses uh, because this is the definition that the European Commission uh, Gab to, to not in April 2020, I'm so sorry, but in April 20, uh, um, 2018. This is a mistake, I, I apologize. Because uh, that what is important? The important is that we know AI refers to system that have an intelligent behavior, not necessarily as human, but intelligence in general, but they do three different things analyze the environment, take action, and, uh, uh, and do something in an intelligent uh, way, 
with some degree of autonomy. And about uh, artificial uh, analyzing the environment, of course, computer vision is one of the most important part, uh, uh, like uh, also the analysis uh, of the sound, the analysis of the language, uh, the analysis of uh, the sensors, but surely uh, all of us uh, are working uh, in, uh, uh, in image and video analysis. And what is important for us is to do computer vision about humans and for humans. And this is something that uh, I, uh, I'm very old, so I did that uh, uh, in the last uh, 30 years. But these are something that uh, we did in our lab uh, in uh, the, uh, some example of uh, uh, what we did uh, recently uh, about uh, the, uh, the idea of human and for humans. About humans, I say people detection, tracking, post estimation, localization, action understanding, anomaly detection, trajectory estimation, and so on. But also for humans, that means replicating a human attention and saliency uh, also in driving uh, or uh, understanding the pose estimation for uh, safety in automotive or captioning and so interacting with robot with vision and language and so on. Today, I cannot uh, um, discuss about all of them, of course, but I will put just only my attention in this part of that. These are recent projects that we have and collaboration that we have in my university, not only with Ferrari, because it's uh, obvious since uh, we, we are here, but also with the European Space Agency, with many companies. Uh, we have in this moment a six European project um, and, uh, and so on. Okay, now let's we start uh, with my, uh, my talk. <coughs> they say that uh, um, working uh, on humans by video has uh, still a lot of open uh, challenges uh, because uh, detection people in the wild, uh, uh, seeing people with occluded view, uh, uh, understanding 3D information and so on, tracking a red identification are still not solved. Uh, there are hundreds of papers in CVPR and actually I finished uh, Yesterday, uh, my work uh, as area chair also this year, uh, I will be program chair in two years at CVPR, but this year was uh, area chair, and still uh, there are many, many tens of, uh, of papers regarding uh, people detection, people tracking, and identification. So this is a topic uh, that is research is still not solved, uh, even uh, it's uh, more than 20 years that people are working on. And actually, this I told you that is an old story because uh, my first CVPR on this topic was actually uh, 2000, two, in 2001, so two years ago, together with uh, uh, Professor Trivedi in San Diego, analyzing people uh, when uh, in, uh, in video surveillance. Many of this work now are become part of OpenCV or project uh, or companies uh, or working, but there is still a lot of work to do, especially now since uh, everything is changed. 20 years ago, uh, neural network uh, was impossible to use. I used it with uh, 40 neurons, if I remember well, in one of my paper there. Now the system are completely different because we can do people and people detection, people understanding the action uh, and so on. But uh, uh, we know very well what is changed. It's changed that with the learning system, especially in the supervised fashion, but also in unsupervised manner, we need a lot, an enormous amount of data. Also enormous amount of computational power, but uh, this uh, is easier because uh, at the end uh, we, you can buy them, uh, but the data to create uh, are uh, absolutely more and more complicated to, to have, to annotate, to, to, to produce. If in one situation like this one, you know very well, I don't know how many of you are working in people analysis, but probably uh, we, we can share uh, uh, the similar experience uh, in these kind of things, uh, having a very good annotation of all the people is quite impossible. Uh, it's quite impossible to have, but also to have a very precise, because if you look, uh, there are part that is hidden, uh, something that is not. And this is the reason that the still data set are so important for our community. I just only put uh, this paper is not my paper. It's a, uh, it's a paper that have been accepted two days ago. Uh, I don't know if it's your or if it's uh, come from uh, other people, 
but this is just a, a new data set that is called uh, head detection, where 2 million of heads uh, have been uh, detected and tracked manually in order to have uh, um, to, uh, to, to have a good uh, a good data set to start. But look, there are 2 million of heads, fantastic. But at the end are just only nine videos. So it's nothing, it's nothing because probably this head are head that are, uh, I don't know if in, in Europe, in China or where, but surely uh, in, uh, in Emirates, uh, uh, you have different uh, type of, uh, of hat or probably in Italy, you have different. So this is not general enough, even there are 2 million heads. So uh, the problem of data is really a problem. And for this reason, uh, uh, what we started to do in our lab is that uh, if your data are not enough, uh, you can create. So to use, uh, as many, many other people are doing, uh, I say circular reality. That means that we use a synthetic and real data together. And this is absolutely important because if you create uh, mm, synthetic data, but realistic uh, uh, enough uh, to do domain uh, easy domain adaptation for real uh, virtual world, you can do something. This uh, has been the first data set we created uh, three years ago. That is, uh, uh, there are nine million poses of people that has been created uh, by uh, with a video game at the end. And uh, of course, this is just only a half million frame, but we have uh, uh, <laughs> the number that you want. And what is fantastic is that you have already annotated everything. You have annotated the, the position, the pose, the occlusion, the 3D position, the tracking, everything because uh, has been created uh, uh, virtually. And therefore this can be used in order to, to do a, a better analysis also in uh, the physical world. This uh, is a picture very close to my house. So this is something that uh, we did uh, in real video. Um, I don't want to spend too much time. You can find that uh, on, the dat on, uh, on the web, but this is an example of uh, the number of data that we can have in a synthetic world uh, that has similar. Um, uh, the green dots uh, are the visible point. Uh, the red dots uh, are something that are not visible from that point of view, but uh, that uh, the system is able to annotate uh, because of course uh, they have the information of the, all the 3D uh, data. And why we are use that? We are use that for the occluding the, 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 mm, uh, the people information. So now I would like to show you three different uh, paper, three different uh, works that are very connected each other. And finally, also a, a real application of what we are doing. Because of my, okay, my style of research, uh, I'm an engineer uh, uh, as well. Uh, okay, I did, um, I'm, I, I born as an electronic engineer, but then I did my PhD in computer engineering and science, so I am in the middle. But uh, I like to do some research that can have an impact at the international level, but also that can be also used in, uh, in the real world. So let me start with the first, uh, the first step. The first step, as I told you, is to understand very well the pose of the people, also in the part that are occluded from that point of view. Why this is important? You know, it's important for many reasons. The first one is to provide a better detection. Because if you want, for instance, to detect, I don't know if you see, do you see my, my mouse? Do you see my mouse? Because I'm moving yes. the mouse. Huh? No, probably yes. no. Yes, no? OK. OK. So uh, so this, uh, if you want to detect this person uh, that is very far and is very occluded, uh, if you don't have the information of occlusion, you cannot detect that. As well, if you want to understand the activity or the behavior of one person, you should have all the information of the person. Therefore, what we propose, it's uh, uh, at the end, uh, a simple architecture that started for uh, 
probably every one of you knows uh, the, the open pose architecture that uh, has been uh, presented by uh, Hasser Sheikh and other people of Carnage Mellon uh, in 2017. And uh, so that uh, they call the convolutional pose machine before call them open pose. Now open pose uh, is the, the name of the open software of that. We, uh, we used uh, a similar idea, modifying that considerably, but that uh, uh, as a first step uh, that uh, is used, uh, uh, add also the occlusion and not only the heap map and the, the path. So I can explain you in one second uh, how, how, uh, how we do. We start from an image, uh, we use uh, some backbone like a VGG, extract uh, some uh, um, feature vector. This feature vector is feed out in a triple uh, pipeline and uh, uh, that uh, are uh, um, evaluated with an uh, SSS, uh, um, SSE uh, loss function uh, connected together. In order to extract uh, uh, at the same time uh, a heat map of the joint, the occluded joint, and also the path, the, I, I will uh, tell you what is that. Now we expanded that uh, also with the fourth uh, uh, branch uh, that is for tracking. And uh, since we have uh, this uh, four branch for tracking, uh, also we use uh, not only a single frame, but we feed uh, the VGG with the number N8 or 16, it depends, uh, of different frames uh, that then are stacked together in a time linker in order to extract a single feature vector that take into account uh, the temporal and the spatial relationship uh, between the point. So uh, the heat map in order to find uh, the, the joint uh, is a classical heat map based on a Gaussian, uh, but uh, uh, with uh, a sigma that depends of the distance. Uh, and we have this information because we have the annotation of the distance. Uh, so it can be more precise. Uh, it's important because if you are in front of you, you should have a larger face. If you are very far, you will have a smaller face, for instance. The path that are the part affinity field are a field, a vector field that put in connection to different join in order to find not only a single join, but also the connection of the limb. And using uh, this uh, first part of, uh, of heat map, uh, occluded uh, heat map, uh, and also the path, we are able to find really a very precise uh, detection uh, and the precision of the people in the data set, uh, uh, absolutely a precision of the 92%. So we don't uh, do some mistakes in detecting people. The recall is, uh, is good enough, uh, but uh, of course, uh, take into account also many, many people that are, that are far. If uh, we add also the temporal affinity field, the temporal affinity field encode the connection between one point and itself in, in the time, we can also have the information of short-term tracking. So at the end, uh, using this architecture, what we can do, we can uh, extract uh, a single joint, uh, the, uh, the connection in limb of this joint, uh, and also the connection in time with the same joint in order to find uh, uh, an area of tracking uh, and also the possibility of them. And uh, okay, this is just a very simple example of uh, uh, the tough. So how can you follow uh, the, um, the motion and different color is the color of the optical flow that means uh, the, the, the different color you have. Of course, uh, results uh, are, uh, are good also in tracking, but the problem is uh, what you can do whenever you move uh, in, uh, in real data. And uh, what uh, we, we find is that uh, results uh, are not uh, in, uh, uh, it was not in 2003 years ago, the state of the art, but very, mm, very good with respect to the other, more or less uh, in the same uh, data. So mean, that means that you can use a, a, a synthetic data set uh, for creating a new data set, but this is not enough. So we spent two years uh, to understand uh, 
the difference and the similar things uh, with respect uh, from uh, synthetic data and the real data. And uh, for this reason, uh, it's uh, more than one year that we are working with uh, people uh, in Germany, with uh, Stefan Roth, with Laura Taixé, with people in Munich, uh, the people that created the uh, uh, Mod Challenge, uh, in order to have uh, a, an enormous data set that uh, we, we, we will try to present uh, this year at ICCV. Uh, that is uh, JTR uh, 2.0, that has uh, 2 million of people, but also instance data set like uh, this one, uh, and uh, uh, with uh, some uh, uh, seen a point of view of the camera that are similar to the real one. So this one are the video of my challenge, and these one are video that have been created uh, in, a synthetic, uh, uh, in the synthetic world. In this manner, we see that the results are fantastic because if you have an enormous amount of data with similar point of view, data are really interesting. So uh, uh, first lesson learned is that, uh, okay, data are important. More data you have, better it is, but also it's important to understand how much the data are similar or are, um, uh, to, to the one that you have in real from the point of view, from the type of people and so on. And uh, that uh, uh, working on occlusion is absolutely important. Uh, and this is something that we can do just only if you have uh, um, data, very precise uh, uh, annotated data. Similar things uh, you can do at pixel level. So uh, at pixel level you say, okay, uh, what's happen if I have this person, but I would like to know everything about this person, but I don't see part of them because he's occluded uh, in, in an area. Thinks about what could happen uh, uh, during Expo or what uh, uh, you can happen around. Actually, we started to work on uh, people tracking in the crowd for the Expo uh, in 2015 uh, in Milano uh, in order to understand uh, the, uh, the flow uh, of the people there. So uh, what we would like to have? We would like to have uh, uh, at the end uh, an information of the person without occlusion. We would like to have uh, the, an information of the people uh, possible with a similar pixel uh, at pixel level. So very close from the pers uh, perception point of view, but also capable to conserve similar attribute. The problem uh, of attribute, uh, it's uh, very important and actually, I, we started working uh, three, four years ago on these kind of things uh, with one of my PhD students, uh, trying to use uh, uh, at the beginning the GAN in order to extract uh, the occluded uh, images uh, and also uh, with high resolution. Uh, you know that uh, the um, GANs uh, has been presented at the end uh, just all in 2015, uh, uh, I don't know if you was uh, in uh, ICCV in Venice uh, when uh, in 2017, uh, when uh, uh, um, Efros uh, and uh, Alexei Efros uh, and, uh, and also Goodfellow presented the first tutorial of GAN. But okay, since uh, that period to now, now GAN are uh, uh, distributed and used uh, to everything. So I don't want to spend uh, too much time of that, but we started to work in order to start to understand if it was possible to create a semantic in painting, so to de-occlude the people of that. And in order to do that, we started with the first small data set, uh, adding people to other people in order to create uh, this uh, very small data set that was not so precise because we just only put one image over the other one in order to create uh, like this one, a possible overlap. But uh, even uh, with a very simple approach, a simple GAN like this one, we was able to achieve, uh, um, sorry, uh, to achieve uh, a fantastic uh, uh, result uh, for uh, um, attribute uh, aspect classification. 
aspect classification is a problem that say, okay, I would like to know everything about these people. So I would like to know more or less the age, more or less uh, if uh, they carry a, a bag, if, uh, the, if they have a t-shirt a or a trouser, or if it's male or female and so on. This was the classical result uh, uh, the classical result uh, for uh, attribute aspect analysis that it was a more or less 80% of accuracy. And what was fantastic is that uh, in, uh, in occluded the images, uh, we was able to achieve an accuracy of 74% after the occlusion with respect uh, to something that was uh, impossible to do in, uh, in an occluded part. Of course, we need a lot of GPU uh, training, but uh, we have a supercomputer, you have a supercomputer, so this is not a problem. Uh, and uh, so we improved uh, this method completely using uh, synthetic data. And therefore, we, we created this uh, new uh, attribute data set uh, uh, with people really occluded by other people. That is uh, uh, with uh, 125,000 uh, of samples and also with uh, a large, uh, max, a large resolution and also with the uh, 24 attributes that we have. And we propose a new architecture. Uh, I, I like to show that not because it's particularly complex, but it's because uh, it's the idea that I have to work with my students. So I ask uh, my PhD student to know very well uh, uh, the literature, to study what's happened, but also to try to create something new. And uh, therefore, uh, we started uh, uh, three years ago. Now this uh, is an approach that is uh, very often used to create, uh, um, okay, enlarged GANs with, for instance, like in this manner with more uh, discriminator. So there is just only one generator that started from an occluded image to create uh, a deocluded image and three different uh, uh, discriminator, they say, okay, I would like that this image can be confused with the real image. So this is the real discriminator, fake real, typical of GAN. But also I would like to have uh, uh, that the aspect of this person can be confused to an aspect of, uh, of, uh, of a not occluded person. So we have another loss that take into account the difference between them. And then uh, I have a third loss, uh, they take into account uh, the attributes. So it was the only also that uh, the attributes uh, are similar and not only, um, sorry, this is uh, about the attribute, this is about the similarity. So that the attributes are similar to the one of the ground truth. So if you are female, you should remain female. If you have a similar, you should have a similar aspect, but also it should be uh, enough uh, acceptable to be confused uh, with uh, a real image. So we use a UNET because in uh, that time was uh, probably now I could use a transformer or many other uh, uh, architecture, but this is not important. And so this is, has been done. Of course, the loss at the end, uh, it's a sum of three different loss in order to find um, a, a better things. Why it's important, the lesson learned also in this part is that at the end, uh, computer vision is changed because of, because of uh, neural network, but it's not changed at all because the intelligence of the designer is to understand the problem and to create the function that has to be optimized and to be derivable, of course, and that can, can be used in this kind of things. So of course, uh, we, we use also typical appearance metrics uh, and semantic metrics uh, in order to understand that this was good. Okay, these are some example in uh, uh, with the, some ablation study, the baseline using just only the VGG, using VGG and attribute, using all of them, of course, you improve point to point uh, the, the painting of the person. And also we compare that also with the famous uh, Pix to Pix uh, uh, of Berkeley, and uh, also to uh, other one in order, of course, uh, to understand that uh, uh, in this moment uh, uh, we uh, we are also um, state of the art uh, 
in uh, the similarity of uh, the attribute. And this is because uh, you can uh, use uh, uh, synthetic and real data together in order to improve uh, uh, this kind of things. So this is another example in the, in the synthetic data set, but just to tell you that if you want to understand the shape of this one, of course you don't see the, the, the arms. So it's very difficult to, to create. These are uh, what has been done, for instance, by picks to picks. Uh, uh, by the, the standard GAN proposed in 2017 that we use as a backbone. And these are what you, you did uh, at the end. So uh, I, I, I gave you two different uh, ideas. So they including the giant, they including the pixels. Now uh, the most uh, difficult things uh, is to de including the 3D dimension. So uh, there is a lot, a lot of work in this time to, to be able to infer or to hallucinate or to create uh, uh, to understand the, the 3D dimension, uh, starting with a single image. This is because there are enormous amount of application, of course, not in uh, this image that is a fake image, but also for instance, uh, we are using a similar approach also to understand uh, where are the wall for ceramic tile in order to create a new environment. So also to work with the architect, there are many, many applications that can be done in, in this field. So I, uh, instead, I, um, I would like to present you uh, in, uh, what we are doing in order to infer the 3D dimension. This is a, lie, a work that we presented last year at CVPR and uh, Actually, I, I, I like a lot uh, since we, it works. Uh, it was a real uh, video. And also because uh, uh, as a model, uh, we use also similar model for um, uh, anomaly detection. Uh, that was another CVPR paper and, uh, and other things. So uh, what is the idea? The idea is that if I have uh, one image like this, uh, this is the famous uh, uh, Leonardo Codice da Vinci. Uh, and the Vinci code, uh, we would like uh, to, to have uh, the information about uh, the 3D dimension of, uh, uh, of uh, this kind uh, of data. And, uh, but again, uh, we, are, we are lucky because uh, thanks, uh, thanks uh, to, the, um, uh, to the synthetic data, we have uh, a 3D annotation. So we have the information of the joint uh, as they move in the space uh, because uh, due to the synthetic data, we can have everything. This is re the result uh, that we can have. So this, I, I show you the result uh, at the beginning. So starting from a single image and also a single image with many people, so not only one people, we are able to understand the 3D position of, of everything. This was the first proposal to do uh, uh, 2D to 3D um, um, hallucination uh, uh, using multiple people together and not uh, one people by one by one. And so I, I was very uh, happy to, to do that. Actually, this work has been done uh, mainly by Matteo Fabri, one of my PhD students, also together with Panasonic, uh, because uh, uh, Matteo spent uh, uh, six months uh, in Panasonic lab uh, in, um, in San Jose before the COVID uh, two years ago. So, uh, and there, there are other, my students uh, that went uh, there. So, now, unfortunately, my PhD students uh, are around the world. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not so happy because I would like to, to keep them in Italy, but uh, it's better for them uh, if they find a good position around. So uh, think about uh, 3D pose estimation. The problem actually is called the 3D pose estimation because uh, uh, we would like to estimate uh, the pose of the person, uh, not only in the duty space, but also in 3D. There are many, many works uh, uh, around the world uh, working uh, on, uh, uh, on the, this kind of things. Uh, for instance, uh, there is a, a work from, uh, this is, I believe, from Michael Black uh, or his group uh, in Germany, uh, because, uh, or, um, yeah, or Paul Small or other people uh, in, uh, uh, in, um, in Max Planck. Um, 
as, a, as a Lee told at the beginning, we have a network of 30 labs in Europe. So we, we are um, quite often, we, we do a PhD exchange or also seminar exchange between us. So this is a network very interesting of, of people. So uh, what we can do is to try to find the 3D position of each pose. But again, the big data set available, like the 3DPW data set, are just are very small because at the at the end there are just only eight subjects or really not a lot. Human is a big data set, but with a single person in in each video. Okay, what is our approach? So let's suppose. Uh, we decided at the beginning to say, okay, I don't want to start uh, with images, but I want to start uh, with uh, joints. Since uh, we assume that uh, the pose detector in 2D is working well enough, let's we start uh, to, to, to work uh, with the, directly with the join. And so let's consider to have uh, for each point, uh, the, the coordinate of each point. In the annotation we have in 3D, in the image, of course, we have just only in the image plane. But what is the problem? Is The problem is that if you have n joints for each of the k people, uh, the other approach, like for instance, uh, a fantastic approach that provided uh, Cordelia Schmidt and other in, uh, in our group uh, in, uh, in Uria two years ago, uh, they provided uh, a 3D uh, um, estimation for each joint of each person in 3D. So it was too long and uh, it's impossible to do uh, if you have many people together. So our idea is it was to try to find a compression uh, feature vector able to be decompressed in 3D. So to compress all this information and to be able to decompress in the 3D space, possibly all the joints of the same type uh, in the same manner. So what we would like to have a voxelization of the portion of the 3D RGBD volumetric space. We don't have the depth, but we have to create the depth. We call them pseudo 3D volumetrics because we know that for the perspective, this is not a parallelepiped, but is uh, okay. It's a, a truncated cone, so it's something with a different shape. But uh, in order to be easier. Let's consider this one like a squared. And let's consider to have one of that for uh, each possible uh, joint. Because otherwise, the other approach, as I told you, was too sparse. If we have 50 people with K, uh, 14 visible points in 100 meters, you, you should have, if you do every one, uh, uh, you, you should have. Uh, 700 uh, heat, heat maps. So in the space, uh, you have an enormous space uh, with really very few points. So what we what is uh, the idea? The basic idea, uh, this image is not so beautiful, but uh, I hope that the idea is, uh, uh, is easy to understand. Uh, we could also call them a teacher student uh, knowledge distillation method, but it's not exactly like a knowledge distillation because what we say that we can train a first network to create what we call the volumetric heat map code. So starting to the 2D image with a join to compress them and to reconstruct them in 3D. And we can do this uh, first part uh, because we have the annotation of the 3D. Then we try to learn uh, from a real image, uh, pixel level image, uh, to achieve the same volumetric heat map code that can be used for the same part. Probably this image is better. This is what we call the, the local pipeline. So uh, um, for each heat map uh, of each joint of the point, uh, uh, we create a feature vector, we uh, put together all this feature vector in a, a single compressed code that is able to be decompressed and decode to create a 3D information of each of them uh, uh, directly. Then 
we train a second, uh, a second network that start from the image to predict the same code of the encoder. If we are able to, with this uh, uh, pipeline, to have the similar code to this one, we don't need to have the heat map, but we start directly uh, with, the, the, uh, with the image. And so, okay, we called uh, this, uh, this first part uh, a volumetric uh, heat map autoencoder that created this kind of, uh, of code. These are some details of them. And uh, but you can find uh, in the CDPR paper if you want. And then uh, we try to um, to train this network in order to have this feature vector similar to the feature vector that have been created to the other one. Uh, if you are able to do that, of course, uh, in real uh, in, uh, in at execution time when you have to use, uh, you will use just only this pipeline. You start from an image and extract the three D. And for this reason. Uh, these are some results. Uh, for instance, in the human 3 million point six uh, um, data set, uh, you start for a single image uh, and you can infer the 3D position of the person. This is the result uh, in uh, the German 3DPW data set that uh, you, you will have uh, similar information also with the two people. But you can have also the similar things with the many different people and you can have uh, their information in the space. And also uh, you can have, as I told you before, also fantastic information of where are the people in 3D uh, also in this kind of things. Um, what is the, okay, the, the cons uh, of that uh, is that this is uh, really dependent uh, of the point of view of the camera. And so you need to know the point of view of the camera or try to infer them because uh, you need to have at least a calibration or at least to have one information of the 3D if you want to have real metric information like this one. But uh, in this manner, you can compute actually the distance of the people. And for instance, we are using uh, to, to do some follow me application with uh, interactive robot. We use them also for classifying video because this, we are doing this for Italian broadcast and uh, therefore like uh, for understanding the action uh, um, uh, of, uh, uh, of the people uh, and, uh, uh, and, also, uh, and also, okay, these are some results in the CMU data set uh, that are similar. So the final question that I have is, uh, but this is working real work. Uh, the, the, the answer is yes. If you have a calibrated camera is working well. And for this reason, uh, with this work, uh, we won um, the, uh, the best demo award uh, in uh, ECCV this year, uh, in uh, last year in, in Dublin uh, with the, um, um, a small uh, startup uh, of my students uh, that did this kind of things. Uh, this is important for safety because now we use the, this, uh, we create all the system uh, uh, in order to understand the distance between people. And we are using that in public space uh, for, for COVID. The system is able to, to count the, the number of people, to, to look at the distance in 3D, to understand the, if the information is good. But what is more important, okay, this is, uh, I, I skipped some part. This is interesting, I believe. What is important is that we can estimate the space analysis, for instance, in one hour or in two hours, what's happening in an area. And this is important for the architect, for urbanistic, for the safe uh, people in order to do that. Now uh, we are uh, selling that also for, uh, um, for mall, for public officer, for this is uh, in the front of an hospital in order to understand where the people staying more. Of course, in this case, people stay closer to the elevator here. This is uh, uh, something that you can do. And so you can have all the information about the people. Uh, in the last two minutes, uh, I tried to, to show you uh, what we can do continuous uh, this uh, part. Uh, 
And therefore, for instance, we are used uh, the similar architecture that I presented you for 2D and 3D hallucination, uh, also adding some graph in order to, uh, to, trajecting, to trajectory forecasting. This has been presented uh, two weeks ago uh, in, uh, uh, in ICPR uh, that is working well. And also, for instance, uh, to detect uh, uh, activity uh, in, uh, uh, in soccer, uh, also for, for video that uh, has been done uh, with the project we have uh, with the company. Uh, this part of action understanding, I have not a lot of time to show you, but use a similar approach, but plus a graph attention layer, and has been uh, accepted uh, just two weeks ago to CVU. Uh, so computer vision and image understanding. And finally, uh, unfortunately, I, I, I was uh, aware of the fact that my time was over. But just to give you an idea, uh, we are working about human also for many other system. I give you just only an idea of some picture, just uh, to if you want to know more about that. I'm working a lot of saliency. And uh, I'm working a lot uh, of, uh, um, uh, on uh, attention. So these are two network, different network. The one on your right is, uh, has, been, uh, uh, has been trained with a people driver, with eye tracker, and therefore learned perfectly to drive, or at least to put the attention in the most important part of the video. So other people, the curve and everything. Instead, your network uh, uh, on your left has been trained with a, a general purpose saliency network and therefore look around like a passenger, look uh, what's happened uh, around. So this is, uh, but uh, why I show you? Because in order to do that, uh, that is a typical machine learning, deep learning method, I used a lot of standard computer vision method. We use the SIFT and many other methods in order to create the data set because cameras have been registered the set by set. This is, was the output of the camera with the eye tracker. And this one instead was the camera mounted, the, mounted on the top of the, the, the camera. So we worked a lot uh, in captioning is something that I like too much, but uh, there is uh, no time now to show you, but uh, uh, I use captioning uh, and uh, uh, for human and robot interaction with uh, the similar concept of circular reality, because uh, in order to train this uh, robot to go around in, in, in a house uh, or now also in the museum, we, uh, we use uh, both a real and a simulated environment. In this case, this is another area of research of other my students uh, that we put uh, a real world in the simulated world of habitat uh, in order to learn uh, what uh, we are doing. So what's next? <laughs> this page uh, is intentionally left blank because uh, there are so many things uh, to do, probably we could also do something together, I don't know, but uh, I would like to conclude uh, uh, with uh, this uh, uh, motto that come from Blaise Pascal. Uh, Blaise Pascal was a phil French philosopher of uh, 1670. Uh, Pascal is famous, is famous all, also because uh, it was one of the first uh, inventor of uh, a sort uh, of uh, uh, grandfather of a calculator of a computer. But uh, uh, they was talking a lot about the sense, uh, about the cognition, and they say, okay, uh, the, the life of the human is limited and our intelligence is limited as uh, are limited our sense. Uh, we do not perceive the stream, we don't see too far, uh, too much noise defends us, also excess of lights blind us. Uh, so uh, our capability in sensing and intelligence is absolutely limited. For instance, we don't see the occluded part of the cord. 
So for this reason, I say that for me, artificial intelligence uh, is not uh, an imitation game like uh, Turing uh, in 1950 anymore, but we should go uh, toward the direction of superhuman intelligence and in particular of uh, superhuman vision. So thank you uh, for your attention. Thank you very much for the wonderful talk, Rita. And um, people in the audience can ask questions, but I will start with some questions. Um, so uh, my question is, uh, for human vision, we use both perception, uh, such as object detection, and maybe reconstructing the 3D world. We also use reasoning, our prior knowledge. And uh, can you say something about this direction? Uh, yeah. For instance, um, for question answering, or for understanding the scene in a complex case or understanding more complex kind of yeah. behavior. In fact, this is a, a something that really I, I study with my students. Uh, I'm teaching also because I'm teaching uh, computer vision and cognitive systems, so also part of neural science, and I like to match. Actually, uh, in order to perceive, uh, we use a three area. The, this area that is area of detection, uh, uh, this area that is the area of motion uh, and reasoning in general. Mm -hmm. And reasoning is memory also. So mm -hmm. we can use uh, three different approaches. The first one is to have a human knowledge at the beginning mm -hmm. and to put it in the model. And actually is what we do when we say that, uh, for instance, human of uh, 70 join is the model we know about the people or is something that we put in the loss. When we create a loss function, we put our knowledge at the beginning. Second, uh, we can instead put the knowledge in the model to, uh, in the memory. So a, a big research uh, area now is to put uh, memory uh, in mm, to model to modeling the memory in the perception system. Uh, I didn't present that, but last year in CVPR, I presented the one paper called the meshed memory for captioning. So we use a transformer with the memory inside in order to take into account uh, the previous knowledge that is in form of reasoning. Of course, it's not explicit reasoning, it's, uh, it's implicit uh, in the system. The third uh, approach is to use explicit uh, reasoning, so using logic. Uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I was used uh, to use the constraint programming uh, in 2000 when I, when, uh, when, uh, I did some, uh, some work of them, but I still believed that we have to put together uh, logic, uh, reasoning, and perception. This is also what is uh, the DARPA system say that now we have to go in the direction of contextual uh, vision, so putting together these kind of things. We can do in an implicit or in explicit way. There are, uh, I think, uh, next research we will go in this, uh, uh, in this direction. Yeah, great, thank you. There's one question typed in the Q&A window. Um, how do you embed environmental conditions such as shadows, illuminations, changes in your synthetic data used for training? Huh. <laughs> Okay, interesting, uh, interesting, Cam. So um, we spend uh, six months or more with the two people uh, to work on that uh, because we started, I don't know if you are aware of the Mod Challenge uh, 17, uh, uh, 17 uh, videos. So it was uh, in the night, in the day, with the shadow, with raining. So we, at the beginning, uh, considered the fact uh, that we would like to have a similar video to the one of real in order to do uh, easy domain adaptation. So uh, using uh, previous knowledge, we create an environment uh, uh, with the uh, uh, with video game, you can do what you want. I'm not able to do, but my students are. <laughs> uh, and uh, so they create illumination, change, shadow, and so on. But after six months, uh, we understood that it was not the good uh, uh, approach because uh, um, uh, we needed to have more generalization. So we created the first data set with the same shadow, the same illumination, the same point of view of the mod challenge. We trained the, the network just only with this setting uh, and result was not so good. So we created a new data set uh, with the part of this video, but also video completely different. Uh, and uh, we understand that the diversity is better. 
So you need to have a different shadow illumination change, but not necessarily as you think that will be in real system. You have to have a very, very different approach, but you can do in, in synthetic data because the, the mock that you have, you can do that. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Any other questions? From the audience, you can either unmute, speak out, or type in the QA window. Okay. Okay, it seems uh, that's all the question for now. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Rita, and uh, for the wonderful talk. And we will have a next meeting with the uh, mm -hmm. Okay. And there may be more, more questions about your research. Okay, okay. Slice, okay. Good. Great, yeah. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, um, that, that's uh, the seminar today. Thank you very much. Okay, yeah. Okay. Let's we go to the other, uh, do you, uh, have we another link? Uh, I believe no, or we have to see here. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. I believe it's a different link. Okay. Great. May, we, may I, I have one minute that I take a coffee, come back? Yeah, that's okay. Just only one minute, sir. It's easier. Okay. My, cook, my cooking area is closed. <laughs> okay. okay.